Okay, so uh, we're going to be working with Geoda again today. Uh, it, this should be pretty quick, but uh, it's a really useful and a very important thing that you need to know when you're doing uh, spatial analysis. And that is we're going to run a regression and then look at how the error, error term in that regression can be uh, correlated with the geography of what, whatever we're working with. Um, and if we know that, that our error term is correlated with uh, with the geography of our of our units, then uh, we know that our estimators are going to be biased, and in many cases, probably not as significant as we might think they are. And so then we're gonna ha we have to go back and adjust for uh, the geography in our model. Um, and so to actually do this is pretty simple um, in Geoda. Uh, right now, I just have the Maryland zip codes up. Um, and what, what you're going to do is just go up and click Regression and uh, pick a dependent variable. And in this case, I think we're going we're gonna to work with uh, the Republican giving amount. And you just click this arrow and it brings it over into uh, the dependent variable section. And then you can add a whole host of different uh, independent variables. And so uh, we could add some various... Um, uh, demographic characteristics we can um, maybe add median age and I think certainly what we're going to want to add is household income if I can find it there it is household income and uh, what we can do is run a regression so you get your results here and uh, Part of the homework is interpreting these results, uh, but also what you're going to need to do is uh, look at this, click this down here, and what Geoda will do is will run it will run the model, and it will produce uh, a series of predicted values and uh, residuals. So it uh, will compare the observed value to the predicted value from the model and uh, save out the, the error term there, which is essentially the residual um, for each observation in the, uh, in the model. And so uh, it doesn't actually change your regression results, but it does add this list of predicted and residual values. And once you've done that, you can click Save to Table. And um, we don't really need the predicted values. You can add them in there. Uh, we're not going to use them for right now. But once you click that, click Save to Table and click OK, you can see in our uh, attribute table, those values have been now associated with each observation in our data set. And so now we can essentially just do what we did last week, and that is look for uh, spatial autocorrelation in our data using the LISA statistic or uh, the univariate local Moran's eye. And, um, this is pretty quick, so we just go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and make a weights variable. Okay, yes, I already have one here. Um, queen, and click create. And it doesn't really matter where it goes. And so this should all be review at this point. And once we have our weights matrix set up, we can go in, go ahead and run our Moran's eye using the residuals from uh, from our model. And uh, what we get here is we get um, we get our scatter plot uh, that shows us the sort of relationship between the geography of of our units and uh, the in this case it's the error term. So there is a relationship, there is a positive relationship between uh, geography and and our error so that's important to know so we need to now adjust for we would we would have to go back now and adjust our model to take into account geography and here we can see where some of these uh, hot spots or clusters are occurring in uh, in our error so um, so now you would you would take this information and uh, do uh, do a series of you know answer the questions of the homework um, and, and interpret sort of the results that we're getting here um, and so 
uh, that's pretty much it. Um, the maps are very easy to make, and so the, the hard part, I think, is the interpretation. So I would encourage you, if you've not done so, to go read the, the um, statistics book for this class. And uh, I think of major interest might be chapter 13. Um, that's where it talks about spatial autocorrelation. Uh, but do some, do some looking into the sort of background uh, for this and go back and look at your lecture notes because um, this is all stuff that we have sort of covered up until this point, but we've not really asked you to maybe use it in, in an interpreting what we're doing. So you might need to go back and refresh yourself there. Um, but other than that, that's it. I mean, it's very quick to make the maps. Um, so uh, good luck. I will, I will send out the link for the Florida and North Carolina uh, shapefiles, and you can just use those. So, all right.